So with the saw, so I was saying earlier this morning, it's just like if you carry a, you know, a weapon every day. Carry a weapon every day, but you've probably got a spare mag, you've got <coughs> something like that, but you carry medical with you too every day. Most of you do. I've got medical on me right now. I carry a tourniquet every single day. With a saw, it should be the same thing. Because it's not going to do you any good if it's in the truck and you walk out into the woods or anything. So attach it to your chaps or to your saw or something like that. So when you go and you get that saw out, you've got a kit. Now, do you need a full IFAC? No. You're probably not going to put a nasal airway down yourself. You need a tourniquet. You need some wound packing gauze. And you need a pressure dressing. Because what type of injury are you going to experience with the saw? It's going to be a hole in your body, right, that you didn't mean to put there. Or somebody else. So it's the same thing. It goes right with the same PPE of, of chaps, you know, eye pro, ear pro, a helmet, gloves, all those things. Have it with you. Where are you most likely to get an injury, you think? Probably your lower extremity before your, and it's a little different with the tourniquet. First thing is, stage it. Do you know how to stage a tourniquet? And if you don't, it's all right, because most people don't. I, I can't tell you the number of, you know, cops walking around, you know, they've got their overvest carrier or whatever, and they've got a tourniquet sitting in the pouch, looking all good, and you open up that pouch, you bring it up, and it's exactly all, some of them are still in the wrapper. Doesn't do you any good. You try to get your hands all bloody, because you're not going to have gloves on for yourself. You're going to do this automatically. You're going to be covered in blood. Try to get that tourniquet manipulated. So when, when it's staged properly, when you go to use it, it's already here, right? You can go, if it's your arm, you can immediately go up. If it's your leg, you can go in and wrap it around. Because if you want to try and do this, I'm 53 years old. I'm not that limber anymore. I'm not going to try to hop into a tourniquet. You're going to have to undo the buckle, put it around your leg, and pull, right? The other thing I like to do is, I like to fold this tab over a Y. You've got a bigger purchase point that you can grab onto. And remember, again, your hands are probably going to be blood. Now, tourniquet, we can go into all the debates and everything. Here's the thing. I've seen people do self-apply, and they've done a deliberate tourniquet, which is maybe just above the wound. It's not a high and tight. And they think, oh, I've got it. I've cut myself in my lower leg, or I've been shot. Watch the guy do it. Did a deliberate tourniquet just above the knee. Guess what he missed? Gunshot wound he had in his femoral artery that came in into the side as he was turning away from the gunfire. Got got in his upper leg. He bled to death. Had a tourniquet on, still bled to death. <clears throat> high and tight. High on the arm as you can get it. High on the leg as you can get it. Anybody ever put a tourniquet on for real on a real patient? Yeah. What, what's the first thing they say after you put the tourniquet on? It hurts. Take it off. <laughs> Take it off. They're going to swing at you. They're going to say, and anybody who's had a tourniquet on, you're, this is how you're going to know they're telling the truth. They're going to tell you the tourniquet hurt more than the actual injury itself. So when it goes on, it's you go until the bleeding stops. They're going to scream. They're going to kick. They're going to do everything. And I've seen people unconscious as the tourniquet's being applied, when they start you know, really tightening it down, they wake up. So, for self-application, your pull tab needs to be where? Towards you. Towards you, the inside. Why? Just like that. You want to be able to get as tight as you can when you put it on because that's the key. So that way, when you go to apply the tourniquet, it's just a few turns. And you've got bleeding stop. How do you know the bleeding stop? Stop bleeding. It's that simple. And what type of bleeding are we looking for? Arterial. Now, the movies where you see the constant spurting and it looks like a fountain, you know when it spurts out? Every time your heart beats. All right? It's, so it's going to be, you know, time to that. When you start seeing it getting weaker, what does that tell you? Yeah, they're dying. They're dying. How long do you have to get this tourniquet on once, once you know? 90 seconds. 90 seconds, because after 90 seconds, guess what's going to happen? You're probably going to go in, yeah, you're going to be in irreversible shock, you're going to go unconscious, and then in three minutes, your blood volume is going to be gone out of your body. You're dead. It's that simple. Uh, a femoral artery, guaranteed that time, if not sooner, depending on how big the injury is. But this will save your life. At a minimum, at a minimum, this should be with you.
anytime you're operating equipment. I'm, I'm telling you, I've, I've worked in the civilian world, I've worked overseas there, but in the civilian world, the very first tourniquet I ever put on a real patient, when they started coming into play some many years ago, and they don't even make the tourniquet anymore, it's the mat tourniquet. And it was this big green clamp thing that had a twist thing on it. That and the cat were the only things up. And the Air Force actually adopted the mat initially, and then they found out, no, this thing's a piece of shit, we're not going to use it. And then soft tea came out, and here we are today. But guess what? All these other tourniquets that came out, which ones do they still use and recommend? Cat tourniquet. And the tourniquets you have are Chinese fakes, by the way. Yes, they're not real cat tourniquets. If you want to know how to tell the difference, I'll show you. But, and there may be a few, I think there's a few recons in there, older, the, the old recons. Those are good tourniquets. Um, they're now, um, oh, my mind just went, Rhino Rescue. Same people, same exact stuff, same tourniquets. I've compared their tourniquet. Make sure you get, they make two different types of tourniquets. One that's got a plastic windlass, one that's got an aluminum windlass. Get the aluminum one. It's a much better tourniquet. The stitching's better, everything. So, we have our tourniquet, it's staged, it's ready, so that way we can deploy it easy. How are we going to do it differently on the leg? Well, we're not going to really do anything different. We're going to do it the same way, but when you apply it, instead of looping it around, you're going to have to feed this through. So this is going to take a little time, and you may think, oh, that's not a big deal. Well, cut an artery, have your own blood spurting out of your body, right? And then try to do all this in a calm manner, in a practice manner. So that's why this is something you have to practice. In your Velcro, you want to try to get as much of that Velcro, that strap, touching that Velcro as much to hold it, and then you're just going to turn it. Now, make sure, where do you want this windlass to end up when you actually apply it? Do you want it on the side? Do you want it on the inside? Anything like that? Do the, uh, no, you up front where it can be seen, all right? So that way, if somebody does come to render aid to you, they see it, and then put it in the thing, make sure you lock it in, that Velcro tab, you're probably not going to take the time to write your own application time. Don't worry about that. Even though doctors like to have it, how about saving your life? Worry about that. All right, and then go. Everybody put one on. Can the tourniquet always work? No. One tourniquet, and that's what I was getting ready to go over. One tourniquet, and really with a chainsaw, that it could be such a big injury, it may not be a bad idea to have to. Now, I know a lot of you right now, I'm going to catch hate for this, and when this goes out on into the YouTube world and everywhere else, I'm going to catch hate for this. Use a windless tourniquet. Rats, k 4 stuff like that. A tourniquet, something is better than nothing. But your better option is a windless tourniquet. As a secondary tourniquet, would a Rats be good or a TK4? Yes. I'm just telling you my own personal experience. I've seen the TK4 fail a lot. It's my own personal experience. Doesn't mean it is. The Rats, could be a secondary tourniquet, but your best bet is one of these. Now, somebody, does anybody in here carry a SWAT T tourniquet? Big rubber thing? Have you used it? Have you played with it? No. Okay, so how many, let me ask you all something. How many people, honestly, be, just be honest, you carry a tourniquet every day? All right, when's the last time you practiced with it? So, that's just something you got to practice with. I bet you practice your dry fire, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sorry, that's that's usually one of my rules. Do not take the tourniquet off, off yourself. Have your have somebody standing next to you to do it because you don't want that muscle memory. Because guess what you're going to want to do as soon as you self-apply? Oh, shit, this hurts. This hurts a lot worse. I want to take this off. I can't. But here's the thing, you can walk out. You're in the woods, you put this tourniquet on, you could walk out. Now, depending on how much blood you lost, may not be the best idea. But here's the other thing, what else should you have with you besides this tourniquet you saw? Especially if you're working by yourself. Comms. Comms. Get one of Evan's radios. You know, have that backup comms, if, especially if your cell service is iffy. Like around here, certain parts of the compound you walk to, I don't have cell service. So, 
Everybody put it on your leg right now. Ready? Go. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Yeah, one more. I think I might need a second. Tell me if anybody needs it. Yeah, you might need it. Yep. Don't take your tourniquet off yourself. So what was it? Did it turn past bad words? Mm-hmm. Turn past bad words? Yeah, yeah. Turn past when they start cussing, one or two more turns. Does it hurt? Yeah. How bad? Just a little bit? Here's the problem. See this? Yeah. Holy shit. Holy cow! Yeah, I can't stand on this. I, oh, I can't shit. even put it down. <laughs> now, now, how does that feel? We're gonna have to cut that motherfucker off. That's a how bad word. That's what it feels. Cause that's fucking. That's bad. that's where it should be. And that was just one more turn on Chris. Like, John, that's on. And these these are the cheap Chinese ones, but that's gonna go. But practicing, how would you know? Oh yeah, like feel your heartbeat. Hit him. Check his. Nope. You'd be tired. Your dad's done. Huh? Does it hurt? It needs to carry two times. Yeah. You, you might. I know I have a. Uh, was it the swap? No, the soft tee. Soft tee? Yeah. Soft tee is a little longer. So if yeah. you're a big guy. Soft tees are hard to one hand. But on a leg, it's pretty easy to put on. On an arm where you're doing it one handed, a cat is much easier to self apply. That's why I carry this one. I didn't do yeah. it all the way. I, I, but here's the thing I carry a soft tee. You want to know why? It folds up flatter. Yeah. Honestly, because it's just ease of carry. But I've also practiced self application numerous times. Is is the cat easier? Much easier. I can put a cat on faster. Yeah, so, man, I like how it's got the metal windlass on it. So if I had to put it up in my leg, yeah. So, so having my leg hurt is gonna hold up better. Once you get it on, now you gotta get help. What are we gonna do after that? Here's the other thing. What do we need to look for? What else do you need to look for? So, additional wounds, but the other thing is once that tourniquet, we need to reevaluate it. Why? Initially, with the injury, what, what's going to happen? Your body's going to do what to protect itself automatically? Those muscles are going to get real rigid, right? It's going to protect itself. So, it's muscle guarding basically what it is. Once you apply that tourniquet real quick, guess what happens after a few minutes? Those muscles are relaxed. Guess what can happen to that tourniquet? Or get loose, you may have to tighten it up even more. And no, if it's bleeding, oh, well, it's just bleeding a little bit, I'm okay. No, you're not. <laughs> you want to stop the bleeding just, just because you can see a little bit of blood? Do you know how much volume, just your, your upper leg, how much blood volume that can hold? You mean you can be a little dead? Yeah, you can be a lot dead. So stop it, period. No bleeding, no nothing. Not oozing, not just a little bit, just because what you see on the outside doesn't mean that's what's going on, on the inside. And you haven't evaluated that wound. You don't know what's going on inside, what it's torn up, how much. You could have completely sheared that, that artery. Yep, yep. Absolutely. And it's because the arteries can retract in. And that's not something you need to worry about at this level. All you want to do is stop the bleeding. All right, we've stopped the bleeding. What if it's going to be a while? How many people live in a rural area? What's your average EMS response time to your house? 30 minutes to an ER. Yeah. So what do we need to do next? Or family member, buddy, helping you, whatever. They've cut themselves. We're going to continue rendering aid. What do we do next with this? We've got the tourniquet on, bleeding stop. Now what do we want to do? Pack it. Pressure. Pack it. How many people know how to pack a wound? Sure. All right. So, wound packing is not, you know what this is? Regular rolled gauze. You know what wound packing ga gauze is? Regular, it's compressed packed gauze with a tighter weave. Will regular rolled gauze work? Yeah. yeah. So 
a t-shirt will work if you have to. What now? That'll be a mess. Promise you infection. But if, if that's all you got, that's all you got. But how do we pack the gauze? What's the first thing we need to do? Take your finger. Yeah, come up here. Finger the wound. Why? I know which way it is. What are you using? Chainsaw, right? It's all reason we're here. What do you think could be in that wound? A big old piece of uh, wood chip, something like that. If you don't make sure that wound is clear, when you start packing that down, what are you going to do with those sharp edges of that? You can cause more damage, and you may not get complete compression on it, all right? Even though you've got the bleeding stopped, you could call. So make sure that's clear. And the other thing for looking, now look, they're not going to like you from doing this, but hopefully the pain of the tourniquet, they're going to forget about the actual wound itself. When you go in and look, maybe, and you may want to take your, your hands and rake out the wound because you may have a bunch of wood chips and shit that's in there. That can cause more damage. So once we start going to pack the wound, you want to put a nice big ball and much bigger than what you think. All right? Depending on the size of the wound, obviously this is just simulating probably a gunshot wound. You're going to need a shit ton of gauze for a big cut like that. So I would suggest carrying two packs of wound packing gauze. And I'll show you the size of them. I've got some for sale. Because it's going to be a large jagged wound and you're going to go through one pack. It's so It's flat too. It's yeah. cheap. Yeah. It's, it's nothing. Big ball on the end. We want to go all the way in, pressing down. Hopefully you can feel where the end of that artery is, that last right. You may not because that artery may retract back up in. Okay? So you may not be able to get, get to it. What I always suggest is put the end, tuck it into your shirt, so now you've got both hands free, right? And this is out of the way, and as you pack, all right, doesn't really matter, you can do fancy. You want to keep doing this. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping pressure. As I'm switching hands, I've got pressure all the way in, and they're going to kick and scream. They're going to ask you to stop. No, it's not important. Don't do anything. Now, you'll see some people tuck and tuck and tuck and do that. Can you do it? Yes, I wouldn't. I would make sure, and I'm pressing hard now. You want to press very hard, and you pack all of this in, all the way to the top. If you have ex excess on the end, what do you do with it? Ball it up and put it on top. Ball it up on top. Hold pressure. Five minutes. If you have quick, you know, quick clot, whatever, that's fine. You can do that, but I'm going to be honest with you now, the studies. Quick clot is really good for pocket wounds, in other words, where you can't get a tourniquet to, so up here in your shoulders, up here in, in your, your lower torso and stuff, it's great for it. If you want to get it, that's great. It's 50 bucks. There's very little difference in what regular wound packing gauze will do and quick feet? clot. Yeah, 30 feet. 30 feet. And this is a little wound. I'm not even half full. I could use this whole thing. It'll go in. Okay, so it takes a lot more, and you've got to understand, you may have a wound channel that's flayed open this wide, and it could be this deep. You're going to need a ton of gauze. You don't have enough. That's what I tell people when they do wound care in my class. You don't have enough gauze. So having two packs is not unrealistic. Hmm? I've used on one wound, and it was actually in, in a shoulder wound, I opened, I started opening package up of what we call, we call it curl X, or it's a real big fluff gauze, big round roll, and it's 10 yards uh, of gauze. I started using those, and I'd already put two, I'd put a package of quick clot, because our wonderful agency was too cheap to buy us more than one on each truck. So two more uh, wound packing gauzes, a, and then I put two of those big rolls of gauze on them. There was probably a foot left on the second one that I put on top. Because it was a big, just gigantic wound. Car wreck. He got impaled and pulled himself out. Tough fucker. But, you know, he, yeah, but it had a giant wound channel. But you got to think about what a saw is going to do. Think about the mechanics of the saw, and that's the mechanism of injury. What do you think a chainsaw is going to do to flesh? You're going to have a lot of flesh missing, all right? So 
packing that wound, and, and there's two reasons we're packing the wound. Obviously, you stop bleeding. You're going to have a ton of venous bleeding above where that's going to be, especially with the chainsaw. So you're going to have a lot of what I call secondary bleeding. I'm not worried about that secondary bleeding. That's good. Circulatory system's still working. We know he's got a good pressure. So, because we're, we're going to be worried about shock, right? And they're going to go into shock and they're going to get an infection. Don't worry about the infect. They're going to get antibiotics regardless. You get a gunshot wound right now, guess what you're going to get? Yeah. Automatically antibiotics. You know, in the field, I'm going to give it to you. If I can get everything else stopped and stabilized, I'm going to immediately start you on antibiotics. And I'd be, do the same thing too. Helicopter flies out to get you on, on your property because you've cut yourself with a chainsaw. Guess what they're going to do probably in the helicopter on the way to the ER? They're going to start antibiotics. Yeah, absolutely. But if you, if you only have a pill or something like that and you know, take it. Something's better than nothing. Doing something is better than nothing. So once we get this pack, we've held pressure for five minutes. Now what do we want to do? And we're doing this for two reasons. We're stopping the bleeding and we're protecting the wound, the inside of that flesh and stuff. We're, we're trying to salvage as much flesh as we can with that because if we don't, and that flesh can die very quickly, it's a ton of debridement. And even bigger chance of infection, even bigger chance of slowing the healing process. We can preserve as much flesh and tissue as possible. It's gonna heal quicker. Body starts healing itself almost immediately on any injury. It starts shunning resources within the body to start healing. Take the tail and wrap it around tight so they're gonna they're gonna pump IV antibiotics. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, immediately. So once you've if you've done all this, put it on top. Now we're gonna go to a pressure bandage. Alright? I know you're gonna want something small, right? Because you don't want big bulky. This is an LA's bandage. I love these for a couple reasons. Number one, guess what else it gives you? A pillow. Yeah, that is a pillow because it's a big ass you package. Sleep on it's, it? it's horrible packaging. More gauze. There's wound packing gauze on the inside of here. So if you only have, say, one package, you've got a whole other package in the bandage itself. Is that there with the intention of pulling it yes, out and packing? That's okay. exactly what okay. it's there for. There's also a plastic thing that you can do an improvised chest seal. You can even put over a wound to protect it even more if you want, long term wise, but that's a whole different class. But the reason I like these is I like things that can do more than one thing. You know, instead of pa carrying two packages of wound packing gauze, you can carry this in one package and you already have two packages. The other thing is this is this suction cup, or I, I call it a suction cup, but it's a pressure cup. It's meant to put right over that to disperse more pressure around the wound. The other thing is you can pull this off, it's just lightly sewn in on top, and what could you use it for? Eye shield. Eye shield, because could you injure your eye and have a cut and stuff at the same time? Sure you can, but you don't worry about stopping that bleeding first. So everybody knows this. The other thing I like about this is if you've ever used a pressure bandage and when you open it up, especially in Israeli, what happens if you let go of the bandage? Rolls all the way up. And here's the up. It's got Velcro strips all the way down so you don't have to worry about that. So it's just nice because I've done it a million times and what do you do? I don't even bother. I'm like, I'll throw it away, grab another one. But what if you only have one? You don't want to do that. So it's this. So how do we use this? Is there a technique to wrap or do we just wrap it tight as we can and go? Probably a technique. Give me a secure bird. You can be my dummy. So we put it on. Obviously, this is going to go over, this pad is going to go over the wound, right? So we want to go and we're going to hold it tight down, okay? So when we do that first wrap, we want it tight and it's going to go over. And the nice thing, the way this is, we're pulling because this is nothing more than what? Just an ace bandage. Same material, down and tight. And then what we want to do is you want to do maybe a little wrap just past it on this side another one pass it on this side for what reason now, i'm not even finished but guess what i've done sealed it off it's not going anywhere okay and now i can do what if i want extra pressure if it's a big thing and it's still going to have some bleeding stretch it put a twist in all right and tell me once i do this i want you to tell me if you feel any more pressure than what you've got on now all right ah! 
<laughs> yeah. Do you feel more pressure that way? So it's going to create more pressure. Now, do we want to completely cut off circulation? Well, it's already cut off. So quit worrying about it. People were, oh, I don't want to cut off circulation. I want to do it too. You've got a freaking tourniquet on. Don't worry about it. And everybody goes, well, do we need to loosen it? We need to loosen it every 20. I mean, there's still people who think that. I don't remember if it's Afghanistan or Iraq, but it's the Army-Navy study that they did. They did years of studies of tourniquet use and stuff like that. The longest that one was applied before they sought surgical care, and according to them, there was no neurological damage to the limb, was 27 hours of application. In, in surgeries on limbs, they apply a tourniquet yeah. and it doesn't come off till the surgeries are done. Yeah. But somebody had a tourniquet applied in the field, couldn't get them out, got them back to a cache or, or wherever they were done. It's 27 hours. Guys, there's guys, they load on planes from a cache overseas, still had tourniquets applied, they were flying straight to Germany. John Wick tourniquets and still flies. <laughs> yeah, he used quick flop though. Oh. Question. Is there a risk of having that so tight that you get like compartment syndrome? Um, it depends on the injury. I mean, there's a good chance you're going to have some compartment syndrome on there. Not really, because you're going into shock, all right? So, can it happen? Yes. Just slice yourself up and let the pool. It, it would be very <laughs> difficult to cause that the direct cause was of a pressure risk, okay. all right? Because once it stops, I don't want you to take anything off because if you do that, you don't know what you're looking for. You may think, oh, well, it, it, I think the bleeding stopped. Oh, I'll take this off. Well, I can take this wound packing off. Guess what you're going to do? Yeah. Let a surgeon do that. That's their problem. All right? Or somebody who's much more trained than you are that knows how to take Because it's a step process. There's an actual step for removing a tourniquet and doing all that you know, for long term. Carry this stuff. This is cheap. This this is eight bucks, I think. A tourniquet is is thirty. I've got the the, the recon ones are a little cheaper, um, my price, but I've, I've got them. Wound packing causes nothing. If you can't afford one, I'll buy one for you. Anybody yeah. needs one, doesn't have one, I'll pay for it. This is this is nothing. You can't just wait for I'll, I'll just give you. Some. Yeah. I'll buy a tourniquet. You get the run. But who doesn't have a turn? Honestly. Who's never put one what? on before? The two motherfuckers need it. But no, I'm, I'm going to give Chris, Chris and I have talked. He wants to. He's putting kits. We're going to do the kit. We just got to go through the process we for all these guys. Two dudes. We don't need. We don't need six guys to carry. So he's talking about using a lot of gauze. I saw somebody take one of these and daisy chain a bunch of them. Yeah, it calls together. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Like, yeah, you can you could do it. How you stage your gear? And that's the other thing: is staging your gear. Um, these things comes come in packages, right? Your hands are bloody. How, you th how easy do you think that's going to be to open it? So take some cloth tape, not the plastic, but you know what I'm talking about—the medical cloth tape. Tear off a couple tabs, fold them here, fold them here. Guess what that gives you? A much better purchase point, and that cloth tape's got more grit to it where you can grab a hold of it and tear that open, all right, and, and get that. It's just a simple five seconds to do that to prep your gear. That is going to take time, and those seconds do matter when you have that type of injury because you remember 90 seconds to get that tourniquet open. That's why I say take that tourniquet out of the package, stage it, and have it ready, all right? Now, do we want it just sit, sitting out? bounce around in your truck, attach to your saw, your chaps, or something like that. Because what happens is it's going to wear down. I mean, it's, it's, it's fiber. This, this is nothing but material that after exposure to sun, exposure to dirt, stuff like that, it can wear down. So, walk inside. How much are your tourniquet pouches? I, I don't know, 20 bucks. I mean, 20 bucks. I'll bet Adam's got them sewn in his pants already. <laughs> <laughs> go, go buy the, the pouches. Have a pouch for it. You know, and have that attached to the stuff. Now, do you have to keep it attached to it? That's up to you, but have it to where it's arm's reach at all times. Because if you cut your leg, what if you cut your leg so bad you can't move? You want to crawl to your med gear? Can you crawl it in 90 seconds? In that time, crawl, get it, get it out, and apply it in 90 seconds? There's a way you can carry it on your ankle. Yeah. Do you do that? 
Like they have, they have pants. Like Blackhawk made pants and BDUs that have nope. them already installed. Look, don't tell me you can't carry one. Yeah, I got one in my back pocket. I'm just saying. And this, he didn't design this. This is a pocket organizer. I turned it in. I got duct tape, wound packing gauze. I've got a pressure dressing, a nasal airway, uh, and a, a uh, chest decompression. All in this that carries in there. I also I don't wear it today, but if I, I don't have this, and I'm wearing pants. I wear his ankle ring. I hated ankle rings. I'm just telling you, hated wearing an ankle makeup because they were so big and bulky. His are slim. It's the first one I've had that's comfortable. Now, I'm not saying this because he's standing right. I'm just saying it's because it's true. But you could turn equipment and make it into purposeful. This is a med kit. Right here is a full IFAC. So don't tell me you have to have a big pouch. And a, there's no excuse not to carry it with you. And you can't attach this to, to something. And I'm sure I've already talked to John about coming up with something that you could purposeful for that. But there's no excuse not to carry it. Somebody told, somebody told me this a long time yeah. ago. You can just take it and wrap it around your yep. head. Yep. And then there you go. There it is. Yeah, if you don't have any other way, dress clothes, whatever, you don't want to carry it in your pocket, there's a way to do it. There's just still no excuse not to have it. I bet you anything, everybody here carries some sort of a bag with them everywhere they go, don't you? How many guys have guns on right now? You have, how many people have med on? With the gun. Some of them hands went down. I know the people. I mean, I, I know, and I'm not calling him Evan. I know he's got an ankle rig on right now. How many people have two guns on? Man, Evan. You let him down, bro. <laughs> I thought for sure. See, right there's... Evan and Adam. Look, right there's his ankle rig, the medical ankle rig. Got the he's had it on all day. It's, it's comfortable, I'm telling you. I, I've worn it. I know, it. I'm endorsed. Last, <laughs> last SRF, I wore his ankle rig all day long for the, the two days, Saturday and Sunday. So there's no reason not to have this stuff. There's no reason. But this is a perishable skill, too. Go buy, a, take a cheap tourniquet, buy another one, whatever, and pri have a practice one and have one that you're going to use for real. Because these do wear out after a while. Yeah, I have to replace them all the time. I'm on my bike. Yeah. You'll wear them down. I, I replace mine. I rotate them. I inspect it at least once a month just to see because I don't have enough power. I just stick it in a cargo pocket. So it's right. Got a rubber band around it. I can pull that rubber band and break it and deploy it and go. But here's the thing. Remember, your tourniquet on you is for who? You. Get your bodies. Make sure they carry them, you know, on their own. But have a dedicated kit you have for your soul. It's how much is a funeral? I don't know. I'll be doing it. Yes. We, we uh, plant some. That's somebody else's shit. <laughs> somebody else to figure out. We got a big auger bit. We're planting your ass vertical. But also, how much is a funeral? Ten grand. Yeah, ten grand. It's right? California, seven grand to cremate. Forty bucks. Forty bucks. I can do it. <laughs> Which one's worth your life? Anybody want to play with the bandages? You want to pack a wound? I'll show you. I've got a bunch of trainers. You want to check out this flashlight? I know. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen. I've, I've got them. If you want to practice, you can. If you want to practice doing the pressure dressings, I've got a bunch of them. And I could show you. I mean, there's a ton of different tourniquets. All these are proven. This is a rat's tourniquet, like I was talking about. What it is, you can see the difference. Does this work? Yeah, but oh, no. Evan was. Evan was there. Evan. You were there when we did the, the difference between the rats and the cat when we did it on, there may or may not have been a live tissue class done. Um, um, and they were pigs. Which one was quickest? Significantly. Did th this worked, but it was three times as long. And it was somebody applying it who knew exactly how to do it, had done it, was well versed, than the windless. Yeah. Kids, these are great. Absolutely. Animals, yeah, especially dogs, stuff like that. These are great. Um, they are making Tactical Medical Solutions, who makes the soft tea, is now making a canine tourniquet, believe it or not. And it's, it's basically a wide version of this with a windlass. It's, it's kind of cool, but it's, they have them. Here's the SWAT T. It's a big piece of rubber. You wrap Could around. You tube and do that? Like hmm? just a bicycle on a tube? Could we do the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. It's what this is. I mean, that's, that's what this is. Yeah. 
Here's the tourniquet cases. It really, it stages it, keeps the UV light off. Yep. And it rips open. So you can attach it to something. You can even attach it to your saw. You rip open, here it is. It's deployed right. I don't know how many of these I have. It's on every med kit I've got. And the thing is, with this, the good thing about his gear, and it's the truth, because I've used everybody else's gear. It holds up. You all already know that. You've watched the stuff. But you, you can absolutely keep it attached to a saw, bang around in the back of a truck, in, in the shop, whatever, out in the woods. Protect your tourniquet, and this thing's not going to fail. It's going to protect and do what it's supposed to. But you can see what a SWAT T is. It, it's an inner T. And you wrap it around. I, I do not like these. They're very, very cumbersome. So when you go to put one on, you see how it is, right? So you've got to wrap and take it, and then you're wrapping like this, basically, all the way around. And you want to make sure Smells you're good. doing this. Hmm? It smells like vanilla. Yeah. That's one of the training ones they sent yeah, that is what that is. They may put vanilla scent on it. But you're doing this, and you want to try to keep this. But to me, it's very complicated. You, you're, Ideally, you want to keep this flat. I have never seen anybody apply this perfectly, where this is all flat and smooth. Uh, and especially, and you're under pressure when you're doing this. This is not like we're standing around talking. You're going to be amped up, because you're looking at it going, I'm bleeding to death. I'm bleeding to death. The appeal to that thing is it's super, super flat. Yeah, yeah. Before you need it. Yeah, I mean, can it fold up and you can stick it in your back pocket and it's not even as thick as your wallet? Yeah. But I'd rather have something thicker that I know is going to work. That'd be for my buddy. So I cut one in half for my kids. <laughs> yep. Make it smaller. Yep. Would you recommend that or the rats? Uh, there's a new product that he, the doctor contacted me. He said he saw a couple of my videos online. His name is Slishman. Now, you may have heard of the Slishman traction splint. It's a foldable traction splint if you've ever worked any type of emergency services. He's the one who invented it. He's invented what's called the Slishman wrap. It's like this, not as long, not quite as wide. It's fabric-like material, but it's also elastic and it wraps. I've been playing with it. He sent me a few to play with it. Now, I, I just ordered 200 from him to, to sell. It's going to be 10 bucks retail. And it works great for, for a pediatric tourniquet. It works great. And for an improvised pressure, pressure wrap. Because here's the thing. This is what a pressure dressing is. It's literally... It's a 5 by 9 They call them abdominal pads, combi pads. It's just a thick piece of gauze, right? And an ace bandage. This is the same thing as that. Is that a little thicker, a little better? Yeah, but it's essentially the same thing. Vietnam, this is what they did. That's what all the medics carried stuff. You know, and I'll try, all of our modern medicine, every bit of it's combat tested. All this stuff has been being done for years. Where do you think the, the cat tourniquet was tested? The soft, the soft tea was invented by a special forces medic who didn't like, he had some issues with the cat he invented. It's also this, guy who invented this is the same thing. Special Forces Medic, he got tired of the Israeli bandages, so he made one that was better. So you could even, even for summer you don't have the money, if you have an ace bandage, you could buy any drugstore, Walmart, whatever, and you can buy these even at Walmart. Here's a pressure dresser. And I even make a little kit that is this, a flat wrap, so it's basically very flat, about this thick, and some duct tape, it's just a minimalist kit. You've got your own pressure dress and bleeding control kit that I package together. If you are out in the woods, cutting limbs, you have a limb and a pressure bandage, you can make a tourniquet with that yeah. if you had to. Improvised tourniquet is not going to do it fast. Just buy the tourniquet. I mean, honestly, buy the tourniquet. I mean, there's all kinds of windless tourniquets out there. This is one that was sent to me. It's the TMT tourniquet, the tactical mechanical tourniquet. No, it's not a ratchet. I don't, I don't know. I haven't really played with it, to be honest. I got it and kind of threw it in with all my stuff and haven't played. I don't like, it's got a very complicated cliff system in. Yeah, to get it in. It's very difficult once you apply to get this to lock in, and that's what I don't like it because if you're... Get around the patent on the other 
yeah, so to do this, if your hands are bloody, it could slip, and the next thing you know, you lose your attention. You know, so I, I'm, I'm not, so far, what I've looked now, it may be the greatest thing ever, but everybody's bringing out something. There's one that's a ratcheting one. There's one, I mean, there's all kinds of different ones. The cat tourniquet and the soft tea just still work. No. Um, one thing that uh, I know, like the type response folks talk about a lot is all of us here understand the value of this, but some of us may be married to or dating someone who doesn't want to do the shooting stuff. This is a much more approachable thing to give them a job. Um, and then the other thing is like, um, I have a bunch of like super liberal friends in New York. Long story, if I know that. <laughs> but after like there was a stabbing in the New York subway um, like a year and a half ago. And then like it was like, hey, can you like teach us a bunch of like tourniquets and medical stuff? So like it, it transcends the political ideology. So if you have people in your world that maybe aren't rightfully minded, um, this is another thing to kind of maybe start bringing them into the fold as part of a broader indoctrination process. I'm, I've had a lot of couples come to my classes and stuff, and that's exactly what they've done. They've done that, and the next thing they know, well, these people aren't crazy. I, I kind of like them. And then they ask about the gun stuff, and like, see, so, you know, they're going to attack response. They're, going, they're getting training and, and getting into it. So, but it's also, like you said, it's a job for somebody who may not want to be a trigger puller. They can do medical. I, I do, ki I mean, kids can learn that. My, my grandson just turned seven. He can put a tourniquet on. And yes, he's small. Small kid, a, a cat tourniquet will now fit him. It'll go on his leg and it'll work, it'll tighten down. So kids, you can teach them to do this stuff, and you should. You can fly with this stuff. I've flown many times with this exact kit in my pocket, including the needle and shears. You can go through TSA. With, you know, now, every once in a while you get some jerk, you know, wanting to ask, yeah, but as soon as the supervisor comes over, they're just going to do that and tell you to go through so you can take this on a plane. I mean, it's all, there's no excuse not to carry this. Questions? You want to play with this? Come on, I'll, I'll take as long as you want so you know how to use it. This is the tourniquet and the SOE pouch. Does anybody here not own tourniquet? Put your hands up. Come on, I know some of you don't have tourniquets. I've got them. Just Jonathan, that's it? You? You've got them. Then. Give them tourniquets, I'll pay for them. Okay. Anybody doesn't have tourniquets, I'll get, I'll get your tourniquet before you walk out of here.